The guy from the $100 bill famously said, in this world, nothing is certain except death and taxes. So far, he's been mostly right. People have for sure died, and nearly everyone outside of some of the biggest corporations and wealthiest people have managed to do their taxes with help from some user-friendly tax software or a professional uh, tax person. So what's the best route to take? Should you become rich enough to staff a team of experts to look for loopholes? Should you just hire a professional? Or should you do them yourself? This is Common Sense, a finance show that answers everything school didn't. To find out whether or not you should seek outside help regarding your taxes, we spoke to former model turned professional tax expert, Duke Alexander Moore. The tax code itself can be very complicated. I mean, it's like over like, 70,000 pages long. They're always changing it. They're always adding new things. And so if this is something you're not like constantly updating yourself with, it's just something like complicated, it can get intimidating, because it's forever changing. 70,000 pages long. That's 16 times longer than the world's longest novel ever written by Marcel Proust. And the tax book grows larger every year. It's a book that disproportionately benefits the wealthy because the current system is designed to work for the few at the expense of the many. You have people with a lot of money and a lot of power who are saying, make this hard so people can use our products and services. And it just makes things very difficult. That's why taxes are very hard to understand. Of course, this disaster is confined to America. In parts of Europe, as ProPublica notes, quote, you sit down, review a pre-filled filing from the government. If it's accurate, you sign it. If it's not, you fix it or ignore it altogether and prepare your return yourself. But because tax software companies spend millions of dollars every year lobbying the US government to keep taxes absolutely insane and complicated, many Americans are forced to use their software and give them money so they can continue the vicious cycle next season. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a for-profit organization. People want to get paid people, and taxes is a requirement. So let's make something required difficult so they can use our stuff. So we create a problem, we have the solution, come here, about $50, but, but come here, and it's just the way it is, you know? While the current system is far from ideal, you can make the best of it. There are a few new things to look out this season to recoup costs. So let's talk about like the hottest tax credit for 2021, like what's going on right now. So one of them definitely is what's called the Child Independent Care Credit. So this is a tax credit where parents can see up to an $8,000 increase in their refunds this year. This is for the first time in history, the Child Independent Care Credit has ever been refundable where you can increase refund. In the past, it just helps you pay less taxes. But this is the first time ever that this is refundable. Pretty much how it works is Running is 50% back of the, the child care expense that you paid someone to watch your kid while you work, look for work, or a full time student. Now, for one kid, the maximum amount of expense that you can pay for one kid is $8,000. You can get up to 50% back. So if you have one kid, you can see up to a $4,000 increase in your refund this year. If you have two or more kids, the maximum amount of expense that you claim is $16,000. So this means that. Hey, you can see up to an $8,000 increase in your refund this year. So, parents, if you pay for someone to watch your kids while you work, look for work or a full time student, I don't want you to miss out on the credit. On this credit, it's super important. And one brand new thing happening this year in 2022 is a payment settlement entity. So, these are things like Cash App, these are things like PayPal, these are things like Venmo. If you use any of those transactions, and are those payment settlement entities and you receive more than $600, you may be subject to what's called a 1099K. Now, this is if you're receiving those $600 in exchange for goods or services. So where people are freaking out and where I don't want you to freak out is that this rule is only subject to those who are business owners or who are using a business account on this platform. So this is not for the everyday person say, hey, hey, grandma. Hey, you give me fifty dollars, six hundred dollars for your birthday, and Grandma will give you six hundred dollars for your birthday. Now you're not going to pay taxes on that. These are for people who are receiving money in exchange of for a good or service. So that's going to be super important. In exchange for a good or service, if you're paying someone back at a restaurant for their meal, you're paying your roommate for rent. Don't worry about it. You're good. I got you. You're good. Everything's fine. It's like it's who's fine. Everything's fine. It's going to be okay. So if you're worried about that rent your roommate Venmoed you, don't be. If you're worried about that rent and your roommate didn't Venmo you, uh, that's valid. 
But if you hung someone's television and they Venmoed you more than $600, first of all, great job getting away with robbery, but second of all, you're going to want to look into paying taxes on that. So with all these new rules making taxes more difficult each year, should you hire a CPA or do your taxes yourself? If you're starting a small business, your tax is going to be a little bit different than they were in the past when you're just using like step two. If you are a real estate investor, you have several like real estate properties, that could be a good indication that you need a tax professional. Yeah. So as far as like other tax preparation software like Turbo Tax, Tax Act, H and R Block, I think they are great if you have very like a very very simple tax plan. Like you just maybe have a couple W twos, you're claiming a couple dependents. I think they're a phenomenal thing for people to get their tax refunds to get the money that they owe. That way they can do it on their own. They have they not pay anybody. But I think it's a great software if you, you have just very very simple information. So should you hire a professional? It depends. I know, I'm sorry about that answer. But typically if your return is super complex and it has you sweating, you should probably seek professional help uh, for the taxes. The source of the sweat might be coming from the fact that you're self-employed or you recently got married or bought a house or moved to a different state. But if your return doesn't have you sweating too much, a couple W-2s or a 1099, you might actually save money by using one of those online preparers. You could also consider becoming wildly rich to the point of keeping people on staff to look for loopholes in the 70,000 page tax book. Regardless of the route you take, make sure to take deep breaths and remind yourself that it will all be over soon. So good luck out there and hopefully you'll get a big return. And if not, maybe the code will be in your favor next time. That's all for this episode of Common Sense. Thanks so much for watching.